Good morning. Welcome back to Culpable. I've struggled with shiny object syndrome for a long time. I'm talking the last 10 years. And to be clear, I haven't struggled with it because I have it. I don't have shiny object syndrome. Almost the opposite. But it's bothered me and I've struggled with it because I've watched people who have it and they seem to get some benefit. They seem to be better than me in some way. People who have shiny object syndrome appeared to be more curious than me. They're always trying out new tools. They're always reading up on new ways to do things that seem to just be pushing us to the next edge node of innovation or as a society. It's kind of blurry, but it felt that way. Uh, but in my experience, what kept this uh, FOMO at bay is that these people also tend to be less productive than me. Um, so I figured, again, trying to rationalize what's going on, I figured that the reason they are less productive is just because there's so much new stuff to look at, you'll never be able to catch up. Uh, but that, and that's a useful interpretation if you don't have shiny object syndrome and you are observing people who do. Uh, but now I think that was the wrong take. Uh, here's what I'm seeing more and more. The allure of shiny at bottom is actually another word because shiny doesn't really mean anything. The allure of shiny, the promise of shiny is better. Uh, underneath, people choose to chase after shiny objects because and maybe more so than better, is the promise, the allure of easier. We keep switching, these people keep switching to new JavaScript frameworks, new no-code tools, new ways of doing things, even outside of our little software bubble, I understand, uh, because underneath they're convinced that, you know what, what I'm using now, the way I'm doing it now feels inefficient, slow, difficult. I don't really understand what I'm doing. But if I go for this other thing, I'll finally get it. That's kind of how I'm processing it now. But it's worth remembering if you've ever done anything bigger than you, if you've ever made a film, if you've ever written a song, you realize that the first, and this isn't my idea, this is something I, I read one time and it went, <clears throat> just punched me in the face. The first 90% takes 90% of your time, effort. The last 10% takes 90% <laughs> of your... So what that means is the learning curve or mastery of something is always hard. It's really just about where that hard part goes in the process of mastery. You can think of this across a variety of skills. One that I like to use is skiing versus snowboarding. The learning curve in snowboarding is all on the front end. I keep moving my hands because I have to remember that you are like a stage left. On the front end of snowboarding is you clip the board on and you fall on your butt like over and over again. At least that was my first experience and I think many others. And I've skateboarded for years, like I get it. I've done a little bit of surfing, I get it, I have balance, okay. But you get on the snowboard and it's such a foreign feeling that you can't move your feet, There's, you know, you have to rewire yourself. So you fall a bunch of times and then when you're up and running, you're good to go and within a day of snowboarding, you're at least on the blue diamonds and you're zipping around and you kind of look okay and you've done it for a day. Skiing is almost the inverse. You clip the skis on and you're off and you're like doing it on your first or second try. But as you get into more advanced stuff, the learning curve hits then. And so this learning curve is something that is 
almost insidiously planted at a different step of the learning process for any skill. And with this shiny object thing, people are really just pursuing some way of doing something, hitting the learning curve. Maybe that's at step one, maybe that's at step seven of that skill. They don't wanna climb over that hump of the learning curve and they see a new object that whether implied or expressly promises something that's easier and all they're really doing is kicking the can down the road to get over that mastery hump. But once we remember that nothing worth doing is easy, we'll be cured. See you next time.